just look at this delicious stuff. If you can't see the worms in it, I'll show you some close-ups later. So this is ready-made compost. Okay, it's delicious. It's gold. Um, it smells very lovely and earthy. For those of you that wonder what the earthy smell is, just smell good compost and you'll, you'll, you'll get it. Um, I've kept my compost in smaller cages, protected with shade net as well, keeping it moist, about 35 to 40% moisture, covered from the elements with the plastic um, covering or tarpaulin covering with a ring around it to um, stop that from blowing off. The old thoughts around compost were that you needed large volumes for your acreage or, or hectareage of land. I've heard everything between one ton per acre to 15 tons. Um, in terms of organic matter and bringing back organic matter back into the soil. No matter how large or how small your piece of land is, the reality is to cover it with a layer of compost. If that was the way we were going to use our compost, would require we need immense mountains of raw material, which we don't have. With climate change, um, getting those raw materials is becoming even more um, difficult. So how do we optimize use? We've been producing compost that is of superb quality, compost that is microbial rich, biocomplete, compost that has got a lot of secondary metabolites in there as well as the um, microbes that are in there. And um, in thinking about how we can extend those and optimize those over large pieces of land, we have to think cleverly about using different mediums. Instead of spreading it out as raw material, we're gonna use water. Water is um, a very, very good carrier of microbiology, as you know, as long as it's staying aerobic. So I'm going to teach you how to make extracts with your compost, extract the microbes and the secondary metabolites into water, and then adapt and adopt the spraying or the, you know, the irrigation kits that you have so that you can get this biology out into your fields much further over a much wider surface area and onto your plants. I'm going to start with the, the kit that you're going to need just so that you have an idea before you start preparing. Remember we're trying to keep this process as aerobic as possible. Your water, as long as it has been stored well, is likely to have good levels of oxygen in it until something is in there that uses up that oxygen and the oxygen levels um, are depleted. So if you're going to make compost extract the manual way. The manual way is quite easy. You'll take compost, you'll put it in a bucket and you'll stir it and you'll mix it up and you'll keep moving that water and that compost in the bucket and we'll talk about quantities in a while but you'll keep it aerated like that. You'll keep mixing it for about maybe 10 minutes after which you'll strain it and you can strain it using any of these types of strainers, just the normal, so here we call this a chungi, which is like a tea strainer, a big one, a small one. You can use a metal sieve. But you'll strain the compost out. You'll end up with a lot of bits and pieces that are still in there, the bigger parts. When you're straining it into a clean bucket, you'll end up with an extracted liquid with your extracted microbes in it in the other bucket. Hold that thought. Now you'll have a compost extract. This is not a compost tube. This is simply a compost extract. You've extracted the micro, um, the, the biology and some of the nutrients that are there as secondary metabolites that have been dissolved and converted in the water, including things like humic and fulvic acid that have been produced by biology. It's really, really good stuff. Another way of doing it, slightly larger scale, is to extract a large volume. Here I've got a 200 gallon um, tank barrel. I've cut the top off it so that I can add water in and out of it. I've added a tap on the bottom down here so that I can open it out and let whatever is coming out here. And then I've bought a kit. It's called a bubbling kit, a bubbler kit. It is a, let me put this here for a minute, it is a pipe that has got holes at the bottom, it's round, it's got holes at the bottom here, it's got a plastic tube to it, it stands inside the bucket and on the outside it's connected to an air pump. 
And this air pump is a um, it's an air pump that is used for a fish or a, a you know an aquarium system. It's not that big an air pump. This one is 60 watt and it does about 70 liters of air per minute. When I connect that to the electricity, it bubbles air all the way up this tank. And in the bubbling, um, we then add our compost in the bag. I actually don't do it in a bag. I, I cut corners. But you can add your compost in a bag and this bag is a 400 mesh um, um, micron bag so most of the microbiology will go through it but the big bits won't go through it and you fold it up close it and then hang it on the bubbler yeah on this hook sorry it's all coming to pieces for now you hang that on the hook like so so the actual bubbler standing in this barrel will be like this and when the bubbles are coming up they're knocking into the bag and knocking the microbes out of the bag. I find that because my garden is quite small, I do away with the bag altogether and I just put the volume of compost that I want to directly in there. I put the bubbler on, I leave it for about an hour and after that I just scoop it out, pour it with a through that sieve um, into another bucket and then I've got the extract ready to go. Um, I find that if I keep it in the bag um, a, a lot of the uh, biology still stays in here. So I like to just let it all out. It does mean that I don't use the tap because there are bits and pieces that will get stuck in there and I have to keep leaning over and scooping it out but um, that's not such a big bother. Now, next very important step is once you have your extract, how are you going to apply it onto your plants or drench it into, the, into your ground or um, you know, put it out in the field. How are you going to actually use it? And there's two ways. You can use a, um, a simple jerry can, like so. Now, because there are little bits and pieces that will be in there, what I've done with my jerry can is I've taken the head off it and I forced all of those little holes. I made them all a little bit bigger than they came manufactured. So when I'm pouring this out of my jerry can, it comes out, quite a lot comes out, but it doesn't get blocked as frequently as it would have and it did when I kept the, um, the default holes on that. The backpack sprayer is great for getting your um, compost extract onto your field, especially if you're gonna be spraying your crops. Um, and you're putting the, um, the biology and the metabolites onto the leafy surfaces of the plant, onto and under. Uh, it's much more effective than using a jerry can. So a jerry can is really good if you're doing drenching. But they're very, you know, they're fine-tuned to very fine sprays, so they've got a lot of filters and things in them. So what I've done is I hack the system completely. I take the spraying arm off, and I go into the, the handle there and I take out the filter and when I spray my biology on um, there's no restriction now for different sizes of particles coming through and what I do is I use my finger on the end so when it's on my back and I'm pumping it I pump it with this hand I then use my finger on the spray and I spray out and I can make it a really fine spray or a, 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 a wider and a wetter spray um, depending on um, what I, you know, the plant that I'm particularly spraying or, um, you know, the, the volume of spray that I'm trying to get out there. It just means that there's a free flow and the biology comes out. It doesn't get damaged and it comes out um, quite well. So those are some hacks on the spraying things. I'm now going to I'm going to set up the bubbler um, just to show you and do an extraction with a bubbler and an extraction by hand with a stick and then sort of sitting it down and spraying it just to show you what that looks like. Location is important for security and also because you need electricity. I set up my extraction unit 
right outside my office door. Speaking my extract is 20 kilos of compost to um, one cubic meter of water, so a thousand liters of water. So in this 100 liters of water, I'll be putting in two kilos of compost. So I'm going to weigh it very meticulously to make sure that I get the right weight. These are my completed compost, waiting ready to be used. And if we dig in there, we'll see they're full of worms and other creatures and critters. These were three different recipes. They've all broken down to looking the same, but under the microscope they're actually quite different, especially when it comes to some of the predatory nematodes. The one I'm looking at now has a lot of... Um, sorry, when it comes to the different nematodes, the one I'm looking at now has a lot of predatory nematodes in it, and the one that um, I was looking at before over here has a lot of fungal feeding nematodes, and this one has a great di diverse. This is an older compost. This is about six months old. The other two I've looked at are just under four months old. Lovely, lovely stuff. So we'll keep those covered, keep them moist and use them in extracts um, and also for sale. Your compost is gold, so try not to waste it. When I say two kilos, I mean two kilos. The bubbler is on and now I'm going to just pour the compost in there. this to extract for about an hour. It'll all be being mixed up in there. When I look at it under the microscope I'll see that a lot of the um, microbes are in the mix in the liquid and um, in an hour I'll come back to continue filming how we sieve and use it. So about an hour later so it looks like just the woody gets put to the top. I hope I don't drop my phone in there. If one was using the um, compost bag, you would just lift all the compost out and uh, you wouldn't need to go through this. But I prefer this method for now because um, I've adjusted my tools for getting the water out. Um, I've adjusted them so that the holes are much bigger. So this works better for me. So I've, I've put this back on, I've made a much bigger hole in the end here, I've taken out all of the filters, let's see how this works. And this works. Not too bad, it's getting a larger volume of spray out as you can see, um, and I can get underneath the leaves as well. I couldn't get before when I had done my other handle thing um, and it's getting quite a good volume out so I can cover the leaves this way. You can play around with the size of the... Ah. <laughs> Come on you silly thing. You can play around the size of the hole. The nozzle, and that's how you get your extracts out. You can get that in sprays or you can get that in drenches.
So I'm now going to show you how to do a compost extract into 100 litres of water. But instead of pouring it into the 100 litres of water and trying to manually mix it in all of that, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take about one or two litres of water into this bucket and then I'm going to mix my compost into it and then I'm going to stir it. That's about two litres there. Then I'm going to pour the compost into the smaller bucket and then stir it gently. Remember, these are living organisms. We don't want to damage them in any way by stirring them vigorously or smashing them against the sides of the bucket or anything. We're just going to stir it to try and extract them from the material that's left in the compost. We'll do this for about 10 to 15 minutes, just gently. This is actually one of the reasons why as well we take out the, the nozzles or the, the filters in some of the um, spraying equipment that we use because we don't want to get the biology stuck in the filters or smashed against the filters. There we go, now we're mixing the concentrated um, bit of compost that we've poured out of the, the two litre mix into the 100 litres and from there we'll do the straining and then application with either jerry cans or sprayers as you've seen in the rest of the video.